Nairobi. Chief Magistrate Douglas Ogoti willed his ruling on Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko's bill application early this week. Sonko is accused of conflict of interest, abuse of office, and corruption allegations. In the soup are also county officials who have been charged with benefiting from the irregular procurement and payments. They include Nairobi County Secretary Peter Mbugwa, Head of Supply Chain Management Patrick Mwangagi, Negotiation Tender Opening and Evaluation Committee members Edwin Kariuki, Lawrence Mwangi, Preston Mwandiki, and Clerical Officers Wambu Andaka and Andrew Nyasiego. Here is Anne Masharia with the details. <laughs> Nairobi Governor Mike Sunko and his co-accused will have to remain in police custody pending the ruling on his bail application in the graft case. Sunko lawyers had applied for a bail application, arguing that the governor was sick and needed medical attention. But prosecution team opposed the application, saying the governor was a flight risk, having escaped from jail before. While setting the magistrate rule that the governor be treated in the presence of prison's authority. Prosecution team led by Getong Gariongo and James Kehara had objected Sonko's release on bail, setting the 1998 incident in which he was convicted for failing to appear before Mombasa court three times in his previous cases. The first accused being the governor of the Nairobi City County, together with the second third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth and ninth accused persons being public officers be barred from accessing the offices of the county government pending the hearing and determination of the proceedings before you honor where the court, where the court uh, analyzed the issue of the gravity of the offense, indicating that the gravity of the offense can be a compelling reason for a court to deny bail. The prosecution referred to the instance where the Shimola Tower Commission of Prisons advanced claims that Sonko escaped from lawful custody after going to Coastal General Hospital for treatment. But Sonko's defense team rebutted, arguing that his alleged escape from Shimola Tewa as a malicious claim aimed at mudslinging him. The first accused has used his position as the governor of Nairobi City County to incite some of the county executive committee members from recording statements in other ongoing investigations and as such releasing him on bail and or to further jeopardize his investigations. Your Honor, there is nothing. Support that at no point in time did any of them fail to attend on account of this allegation. And that investigation, Your Honor, is ongoing on other issues. So if the governor was to interfere, at that, then he would have interfered at that point in time prior to being arraigned. He had all the powers to interfere, he never did. He ordered all of them, and they all turned up. The accused faced nine charges including conspiracy to commit offense of corruption, willful failure to comply with procurement laws, conflict of interest, abuse of office, unlawful acquisition of public property, deceiving principal, money laundering and acquisitions of proceeds of crime. Sunko's lead lawyer Cecil Miller introduced a phalanx of his lawyer's colleagues ahead of plea taking. Without a deputy governor, Nairobi County has found itself in a dicey situation. The constitution states that the office of the governor shall be vacant if the holder of the office dies, resigns, ceases to be eligible to be elected county governor, is convicted of an offense punishable by imprisonment of at least 12 months, or is removed from office under this constitution. The law states that in the event a vacancy occurs in the office of the county governor and that of the deputy governor, or if the deputy governor is unable to act, the speaker of the county assembly shall act as county governor, but only for 60 days. Just in the case of Voititu and Leno Kulal, Sonko will be barred from discharging his duties, hence the speaker will come in. And Mashere KUTV.